being the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, I feel a great responsibility uh, to do as good a job or as great a job as you possibly could do because the lives of so many people throughout the world, people with HIV AIDS, people with malaria, tuberculosis, respiratory diseases, all of those things come under the rubric of what I'm responsible for to develop the interventions that would be ultimately not only life-saving, but prevent suffering and disease throughout the world. Well, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. My father is a pharmacist, so I had some exposure to the health issue, but I don't think that was the major thing leading me into medicine. It was mostly training in high school and college in, by the Jesuits who taught humanities, classics, Greek, Latin. So I became much more of a humanitarian type person than a scientific type person. So I figured the best way to combine an aptitude toward science with a desire to do something that strongly relates to people and taking care of people. You put all of those things together and you come up with the field of medicine in my mind. I, I, I like communicating uh, science to the general public so that they can understand why it's important to support it. So my motto for that is precision of thought, know what you're talking about, know what your message is, and economy of expression. Say it as briefly and succinctly as you possibly can. One of the moments among a few that I'm most proud of in my life my role as the director of an institute that funds most of the research in infectious diseases and the drive towards the development of what has now turned out to be life-saving therapies for a number of diseases, but particularly HIV AIDS. We've also developed a number of vaccines against very important diseases. And importantly, in 2002, President George W. Bush asked me to go to Africa to see if I could put together a program that would provide life-saving interventions in HIV, a program which ultimately came to be known as the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, or PEPFAR, which already has been responsible for saving several million lives in the developing world. When we first got involved in studying what turned out to be AIDS, we didn't even know what the agent is that caused AIDS. All of the research that was funded by the NIH and our collaborators and people done here have led everything from the identification of the agent, the development of diagnostics, to the combinations of drugs that we now have that can actually get a person with AIDS or HIV infection to live essentially a normal lifespan. That's one of the most impressive medical advances in the history of medicine. There will always be emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. The one that I get most concerned about and the thing that does, quote, keep me up at night is the concern about a brand new influenza-like respiratory illness that will spread very rapidly and cause a degree of morbidity and mortality. But that concern is matched by the effort to try and develop an intervention that would prevent that from happening.